What's going on everybody? Average Arcader here and welcome back to Grave Danger, but this is a very special episode today. I am joined by one of the creators of this wonderful game. Uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Uh, hello there, uh, my name is Shami, although that's my uh, nickname because my full name is kind of hard to pronounce. Uh, and I'm the lead developer of this project and also the producer of it at our glorious team shapescape yes guys if you haven't heard of shapescape which you must live under a rock if you play minecraft um they are <laughs> one of uh, one of the uh, very very well known uh, creators on the marketplace they've designed many of wonderful maps many that i've covered on my channel um and i would suggest if you haven't checked them out go check them out right now they have uh their i'll make sure to leave a link to their list on this episode of their game list so that you can go check out many of their awesome creations but today we are going to be talking about their latest game grave danger that they released free on the marketplace right now and thank you again for joining me today my friend Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> it's a pleasure. So, well, we're going to go ahead and get started by uh, playing a little bit of where we left off, and then I will ask you some questions. Let's see, where was I? Yeah, we were on eight. Oh, this one looks hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually easier than, uh, than you would expect, but you'll see. evacuation route so these guys are not as good as these guys are just as awesome as the paladins they the aim of those archers job. amazing uh, true the archers are very skillful with their crossbows and that's how they will support us so how uh so do you know how many people worked on it all together uh something between 20 to 30 people worked on this uh, closer to 30, actually. Like 29-ish people. Those are all people from uh, the different uh, divisions within Sharpscape. Yep, all of the different uh, departments. The production, marketing, testing, everybody was was involved uh, in this. So, yeah, quite, quite a substantial chunk of our team worked on this. I mean, I could definitely see that a very big amount of work went into this. Uh, oh, yes. There's, there's <laughs> even for me, I can tell there's a lot going on <laughs> in uh, the background here. Yep. I mean, just the amount of uh, different enemies, traps, levels, like, you know, that just kind of bloated those hours. There was a lot of work on, on a lot of stuff that needed to be done. Uh, and uh, yeah, as you said, there's a lot going on. So, uh, how did the original idea for this even come up? Well, uh, the original idea was suggested by us, uh, and um, it basically came from uh, me, actually, uh, where I was playing a lot of different. Uh, power defense games at the time, uh, some also micro-based, like uh, Dragon uh, Dragon Defenders, I think, that's uh, that's the one, yes. uh, which was very cool, by the way, uh, and that kind of prompted me to think about, you know, maybe doing one power defense game at Sheepscape 2, and uh, that's kind of around the time where uh, Microsoft approached us regarding, you know, doing something for the celebration, we were like, sure, why not? Let's try this. Because uh, those kind of games are usually relatively scalable. Uh, so you can make something, uh, you can make a nice prototype, test it, and then see if it works or not. Uh, and then, you know, scale it and add more levels, add more traps, add more enemies, stuff like that. Uh, we also wanted to have a little bit of a unique twist on the tower defense genre. Because uh, as you probably noticed already, uh, you don't really praise you place traps, uh, so you place stuff on the path itself, 
instead of placing it next to the trap, which usually most of the tower defenses uh, do. Uh, that's something that uh, uh, was heavily inspired by games like uh, Dungeon Defenders, Orcs Must Die. You know, there's there's a handful of those where uh, where you have that kind of FPS uh, mixed with uh, uh, with tower defense kind of games. You know, and that's something that's just much much better than just plain tower defense because you are actually part of the action. You can you know influence what's going on uh, instead of just putting down the drops and, and hoping for the best, basically. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I kind of do get much more into this one than I do. I do love Tower Defense. I cover a lot of them on the show, but I do like how this one is set up because it does force me to strategize a lot differently. Um, you know, thanks to your awesome tool of that, you know, line that shows you where they're going uh, and how your traps interact with their path, now it's all about managing those different, you know, waves when they come in and it's not just standing there, which adds a lot of interaction to the game. Oh, yes. I'm not sure because... Oh, actually, you haven't. Uh, I want uh, nothing. I haven't said anything because that would be <laughs> spoilers and uh, we want to avoid them at all costs. So uh, I want to add something regarding that, but I think I, I won't actually. Uh, I'll, I'll let you discover that yourself. Uh, but yeah, right. yeah, I agree. I'm gonna get this one started then. <laughs> <laughs> so the ideas for the weapons, I I definitely love the hammer. How did you guys set that up for the hammer? Uh, in terms of how it is done, mechanic-wise, or uh, or just oh, the idea? Yeah, the idea and how it's done, mechanic-wise. Uh, well, the idea basically came from uh, us wanting to have two different, well, to cover basically all of the bases. Because uh, the staff acts as basically a sniper rifle. It's high damage output, but you can target only one enemy at the same time. Uh, and the hammer, uh, you know, can target multiple enemies, but the damage output is lower. Uh, that's the first thing. So we want to have, you know, those two different different types of types of weapons to give the player, you know, different options when it comes to uh, defending himself. But also at the same time, we also want to have a melee weapon and a, a ranged weapon. So we're like, sure, let's add the stuff because that's kind of you know basic and magical stuff. You can shoot projectiles with it. But then we're like, we kind of need a melee weapon that can also be a ranged weapon. And we're sketching a bunch of ideas, trying different things out, and it landed on a hammer. Because uh, I don't know if you if you noticed, I'll actually try to show that to you, because that might be easier to do when there's two people, actually. Uh, the hammer has like a little, not a barrel, but like a, like a hole at the top that actually shoot the projectiles. Uh, so you kind of combined two weapons in one, and you can use both, uh, both, both as a melee weapon, but also as a, as a ranged weapon, with a little bit different function than the, than the stuff. Gotcha. Alright, I'm gonna start this next wave. If you look very closely at the hammer, uh -huh. you can see that there is a little hole there. Oh. At the top, which, you know, where... shoots the projectiles. Okay. Also, skeletons. <laughs> Skelly boys. Oh boy. Now I forget from the description, how many different enemies are there again? Uh, well, once again, spoilers. I can list all of them. Uh, no, I don't no, no, just like the number. How you many, don't gotta list all of them. But... Just like, like how many are there? That's... Give me a sec. I need to quickly list them in my head. <laughs> Turn <laughs> ten plus bosses, because those are also in the game. Yes, I haven't got to a boss yet. I was very, yep. uh, I've been anticipating that and dreading that Soon. at the same time. <laughs> <Soon>. <laughs> Uh, bosses are actually quite interesting because bosses like that's also something that's not really that often uh, seen in tower defense games. 
boss doing boss fights in a tower defense it's challenge <laughs> because it's not really that simple to design a boss that actually works in this environment because the boss you know it can be too fast because it will just blast through your traps but at the same time it has to you know do some damage in a creative way so the player you know can still react and the traps have to deal damage but they can't kill him and it's like there's so many factors in this in designing bosses for this and we designed five uh, and I think each of them is uh, unique enough to be a challenge in its own, which is uh, quite fun, I, I think. Also, uh, introducing two new enemy types right now. The melee skeletons uh, with uh, swords and also the ranged skeletons with uh, the bows. I don't think they've been... I think this is the level they get introduced for the first time, I'm not sure. Yes, they are. Uh, especially seeing that those other ones have armor too. I haven't fought any skeletons yes. with the full helmet and everything. They are quite tough to kill. Uh, oh shit, I died. <laughs> Both because they uh, have uh, higher uh, knockback resistance, uh, but also just higher health in general. So yeah, not so easy to throw into lava. Or anything. Okay, let's see here. Level 8 and 9 are kind of where the fun begins, because that's when you start, like, your trap collection gets a little bit bigger. That's the first thing, but also more enemies come into play. And it just becomes, you know, a little bit more uh, difficult. <laughs> if you oh, may. definitely, definitely. I noticed that right away, which is good. I mean, I'm very, very impressed by the number of traps. And then the there's only a few traps that I noticed that no matter what map you're on, you can place them for sure. And they're going to be very effective. And then there's others where it's like you can place them, but they may not be as effective. Like the springy yeah. traps, you know, you can't just place them anywhere. There, you There's certain locations you're going to want to use them. And yep, there's, 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 there's a lot of traps that are very situational. Uh, yeah. Both the strength traps, the arrow traps also. Uh, actually, this level is quite good for them. Because the, the, big, the biggest advantage of arrow traps is that the arrows actually travel a very long distance. So, for example, if you pray, place an arrow trap here, on this wall, right at the start, if something triggers it, the arrows will actually travel all the way, you know, down this path. So in case they miss the initial skeleton that was going, you know, right there in the front, they might still hit something that's behind them. So you know, just that allows you to maximize the damage. So usually putting them at like corners and stuff, that's a very good tactic. Putting spring traps at the end, to, like throw them back to the start and you know have them walk all over, you know, your uh, your little path of death. Uh, that sounds like a good idea. Uh, I know uh, those spring traps really came in handy with the with the small corridor ones that have the lava passages. Um, yep. Those spring traps destroy. Oh, yes. <laughs> and it, it's kind of fun just to see a, a mountain of zombies just be <laughs> Chucked into Being the lava. Thrown, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think uh, that was level six overpass or something like that. That's one of the best levels to do it. It's just so much fun <laughs> seeing all of you know the zombies flying about and being thrown to the lava. It gets a little bit more difficult uh, on later levels because you know you get uh, more augurs, you have you know high uh, high uh, knockback resistance. You get um, those skeletons uh, with armor that also have high number of resistance, so it's not that easy to, to actually throw them into the lava. But still, <laughs> you can do it so well with like counts and stuff, it's just amazing. There's especially one level very, very late in the game, I think level 21 or something like that, uh, with a great view uh, and also great ability to just throw stuff off the edge. Uh, I think it's one of my favorite ones uh, because you can use. So many different traps there to, to do the job. It's relatively simple too. Okay, yeah. so now here comes no some spoilers. of the <laughs> some of the much more uh, bigger questions. What was the hardest part about putting this map together? Uh, we kind of briefly touched upon this already. 
uh, time. Because we went very, very ambitious with it. Uh, we wanted to do a lot of stuff, you know, we wanted to do basically our best, and uh, I, I think we did. Uh, but that also meant that in that relatively slim time window, because this of course had to be finished for, you know, the celebration, uh, we wanted to do quite a lot of stuff. So that involved, you know, getting a lot of stuff from our you know, team on board on this, so we can actually finish this, finish this on time. And it's not that easy. You you can't just put more people on a project and hope it will get finished faster. You need to actually coordinate that, all of that work, and that is that takes time, a lot of time. <laughs> uh, we actually get two people uh, kind of doing the coordination work on this. Me as the main producer, and then also uh, Paul who was uh, co-producing, uh, was doing the asset creation part of things, uh, coordinating that and making sure that, you know, the textures fit, uh, that the models and animations are done correctly and, and all of that. Uh, so he was, you know, overlooking all of our uh, art team uh, in, in this project. Uh, and yeah, that, that was very difficult to do, uh, to make sure that everything just clicks together and works together. Uh, th those two things really were, were, you know, the hardest part of the whole thing. Gotcha. Now, um, the music, which is amazing. Did you guys also um, make the music as well? Yes, the soundtrack is uh, fully custom made by uh, Adam, uh, Aaron, uh, sorry, <laughs> by Aaron Crowder. Uh, he did the full soundtrack and it should be up on Spotify today. Uh, so you can check it out there if anybody is interested. Uh, it lasts, it is what, one hour long, I think? Uh, which is quite a lot. But at the same time, every single level has a different track. Uh, we have a different track for the cutscenes, the main theme is different in the main menu, the preparation phase, as I so call it, uh, theme is also different, the credits theme, uh, there's just a lot of, a lot of tracks in that. And yeah, I absolutely love the music. Aaron did a very, very good job on that. And I absolutely adore him for that. Right on, right on. Um, so what would you say was your favorite part of making this? Like, Well, I think prototyping probably, because uh, I spend a lot of time doing that. Uh, prototyping traps specifically, because uh, you know, when, when you prototype stuff, you need to test it too. Uh, and I just caught myself so many times just playing the game, essentially trying to figure out, you know, what the best way of doing a certain trap would be. And that just, that was just amazing experience, trying to figure out all of those traps. Uh, both because, you know, it was just fun to test them, but also quite a lot of stuff that you can see, quite a lot of those traps are relatively hard to do dev-wise, which means that we had to, you know, improvise on many occasions. And that that's just something that I love to do. And that's why I, that's why I like working with Minecraft in the first place. So that pushes you to, to think outside of the box. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed that a lot. set this up next one up level yeah, nine the dining That's actually, yeah. yes. yes we're actually pushing a little hot fix oh, oh. shut up to the castle <laughs> <laughs> While I do all the work and set up the traps. I am doing my job. I am accompanying you and looking cool while doing so. <sighs> do you remember when the talking helmet decided if we two would join the knights or the mages? Of course. That was such a beast. Uh, another thing oh. I wanted to point out, the voice acting is phenomenal, by the way. So uh, whoever the voice actors are, they did a really good job. Yes, they did a very, very good job, uh, I have to say. Uh, 
I don't remember the names from the top of my head, but they are listed in the credits. So if anyone is interested and want to contact them potentially uh, for some work there, there. Uh, but yeah, especially the voice actors that did uh, Piper. Uh, I'm probably uh, like the happiest with, with that specifically when it comes to voice acting. It's just amazing. Uh, I don't think he unlocked the Rotator 9000 yet, uh, no, but that no, trap, that, like, when you place that trap, the line that, you know, Piper sometimes says, that's just, oh, my favorite. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll see later, but yeah, uh, the voice actors did a very good job. I just wanted to quickly touch upon one thing that uh, I kind of mentioned when we were in the lobby. Yeah. Uh, we are pushing a small hotfix probably next week. Uh, we already did it, it's just, you know, being submitted and tested. Uh, for a few small bugs that uh, that uh, came through, one of them being uh, the menu not working correctly, because technically speaking, uh, after finishing a level, it should just throw you back to like the menu with the level, so it should show the next level, so you can just click play, and you're instantly in. So you don't have to click for the whole menu. But something gotcha. went wrong, unfortunately. But yeah, we are, we are fixing some things, uh, and fortunately there weren't that many issues, which uh, I'm pretty pleased about. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Sorry. Yeah, it runs or, uh, runs amazingly good. I I, I didn't run in the, the most important thing. There's nothing that's game breaking or you know game stopping. None that yeah, I noticed. not really, not really. I haven't like we've seen one issue on some devices on low end devices. It sometimes got soft soft lock on like cutscene on level thirteen or whatever. Uh, that should be fixed now uh, in that hotfix. That's one of the fixes that we did. Uh, that's also very, that was also a very, very weird issue, by the way. But yeah, it, it should be covered now. But yeah, there weren't too many game blocking issues, which is which is nice. That's always like the biggest, you know, uh, I was so anxious <laughs> when releasing the project. Uh, like days before, I was just checking and checking over and over seeing if we missed anything because uh that's a big crowd you're releasing this to and uh oh boy uh will they test it to you know to its boundaries like such big group there always doubt to be somebody who will have some issues yeah i mean i've i've helped a, a lot of studios when it comes to game testing i've been i've been a tester uh, for you know a lot of the different studios who've asked me to help test games and it's an all it's a constant fear people don't understand that because i'm like no matter how much we test it it's yeah, almost it's something yeah. yeah it's <laughs> almost impossible to account for every single variation of type of pc <laughs> like, yes. not only type of pc but like something that's wonderful about bedrock i mean wonderful for players but absolutely terrible for us as devs is that this can be played you know on almost every device that you can imagine mm -hmm. like android iphone switch xbox playstation pc hell kindle you can play minecraft on kindle <laughs> we need to account for all of those devices all of the different you know input types uh, controller you know touch uh, and also mouse and keyboard and also different ranges of uh, specs, because some devices are a little bit more capable than others. So it's a nightmare when it comes to that and testing. But yeah, fortunately, not much stuff broke, which is good. But yeah, as you said, it's it's a struggle, uh, especially on those on those low low end devices, which actually work quite well. Like this map works quite well on them, which I'm very happy with because we tried our best. Also, a new type of zombie. Ooh. The Holly zombie. I bet you guys had a lot of fun just, like you said, just sitting down and brainstorming the different types of uh, enemies. Oh boy, yes, in. we did. It was a lot of fun generally planning this project. It's so much, you know, reference art, uh, hunting for that, and then trying to figure out, you know, balancing the thing. Like, there's quite a lot of different types of enemies and then trying to fit those into those waves so it makes sense and that player progression is you know nice and slow and you can uh you can really experience all of those new enemies 
one by one kind of uh, it took a lot of planning to, to make it to make it right I was going to say something about uh, one thing but I kind of forgot um, if you have never tried what was it I forgot Oh, I think it was, yeah, regarding testing, generally speaking. Uh, the issues with projects like this, uh, specifically, uh, of this magnitude, is that it's actually very hard to test it, because the whole, like, rushed playthrough of this is around 9 hours long. So, to test every single thing, including, you know, unlocking all of the achievements, playing for all of the levels, testing different strategies, testing different trap layouts, testing different, you know, there's so many things that you have to do. And, like, that just takes so much time. <laughs> we have multiple testers on this and we still haven't caught anything because it's just, like, so big. <laughs> oh, people underestimate just how much testing... It's a reason why there's a full-time market job for that. Because oh, yes. yeah. you're talking about countless hours worth of playing and replaying and replaying and replaying. I mean, you know, it's... <laughs> I love doing it because I'm a freak who... I can... <laughs> if, 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 if it's even slightly enjoyable, I can do it repeatedly over and over and over and over again. So it doesn't bother me. But there's people who have... Uh, who will watch a tester do their job and they're like, you're crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. You're getting paid to play games. Uh, and, uh, it's, uh, not, it's not that simple. It's not that simple. No, it's not. It's both, not Because yeah. yeah. you're both, not just playing. Because, your, your whole yeah, idea, your goal is to break the game. Yeah, you're exactly. Tr you're, and you're trying to cause problems. There's a lot of just as you said, playing stuff on repeat, trying different things over and over and over again, and then you, if you encounter a bug, you need to replicate it and then log it. And it's just, it's more, much more than that. But it is, it is fun. Playtesting is also very, very fun. But yeah, then, our, like uh, you said, no matter what you do, there's a chance you're going to miss something. Yep. Especially when you play something for so long, because uh, like. At some point, you kind of stick to the same tactics, I would say, uh, and you stop using, you know, all of those different traps. Uh, so you might miss things. And, you, know, you need to be open, uh, open-minded when it comes to that. Uh -huh. How is it so, going down here? I'm about to place the last trap and get her open. Let me do that for you. Send where say when you're ready. What's that? Good to go. Yep, go ahead and get her started. There we go. So what would be your favorite enemy in the game? My favorite enemy in the game. Well, in terms of design, like just Stylistically speaking, uh, I think it will be one of the bosses, uh, the one that's also showcased in uh, a lot of the art, uh, the big plushy teddy bear. Uh, uh. I think is my favorite one when it comes to the looks of it. Uh, when it comes to the function uh, and just uh, how tactic breaking, I guess it can be. Uh, how much you have to adjust for them in a way that will be hounds. Because uh, when there's a hound wave, oh boy, you better be prepared. Because uh, I don't know if you know this, but those waves can be quite deadly, uh, especially if you're not prepared. Because uh, they completely throw your tactic around. Yeah, you're uh, expecting slow moving things, and then the hounds yeah. come and they're just really quick and they're running right at you. Yeah. That's something that I really like about them. Like that's that's exactly why we implemented them, just to give that you know variety and that feeling of always being kind of on the edge. Uh, so you never know, maybe they'll come. And they'll break your day, ruin your day. But yeah, I, I think those two are my favorite ones. Uh, there's I hate, like I hate the big guys, just to let you know. The, the ogres? <laughs> yes. 
We actually nerfed them quite a bit. They were much stronger before. They were stronger? Are you mad? Yep, yep. <laughs> I mean, because the issue is the issue is that after you play, after you test the project for so long, right? Yeah. Your judgment is kind of clouded. Because for me, what we are doing right now, that's standard mode. It's easy. Like, I can do this with, you know, hands behind my back. Because uh -huh. I played so much that I literally know like all of the tactics and I know which enemies, how to treat them and stuff like that. So for me, when I was initially balancing it, it balancing it and setting the, the damage values and the health values and all that, it seemed like it was fine. <laughs> but then we gave it to some to some testers who never played it and they were like, you got to nerf them. They're too strong. <laughs> we literally can't finish a level. Uh, so yes, we did nerf them, but uh, they they are strong. But they, you know, the main weakness is they're slow, yeah. and you can quite easily kite them too if you know how to do that. And to be honest, if you focus solely on them, just shooting them with your staff, because that that's uh, that does the most damage, uh, you can get them down pretty quickly. Uh, gotcha. So yeah, you just gotta focus. Yeah, just gotta focus. But yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with the overall variety of enemies that we got, because there is quite a few. I, you still haven't seen all of them. Uh, it's, what, level 9, I believe. Uh, so we still have one more, one or two more standard enemies to introduce, uh, and then all of the five bosses. Uh, okay. So there's still quite a lot of uh, stuff to discover, and then different you know combinations of those, uh, of all of those. Last wave, by the way. I better spend all of your mana. Okay, there. Yeah, let's get this. But yeah, uh, the others can me... be problematic. Here we go. Oh yeah, I know. I've been surprised by some of these last <laughs> waves. I... <laughs> but they also give you a little bit more mana when they die. So there's that. That's a plus. I, I think it's I think it's balanced out perfectly. I hate them, but I I wouldn't yeah. say they were overpowered or anything like that. Yeah. If if you like you said, it's all about just paying attention and focusing on the right ones. Yeah, exactly. I said it's mainly if you're just because uh, these later levels I've noticed they they really like to split up how the waves are separating, you just have to pay attention to, you know, where they're going and making sure to stay in front. Yep, exactly. Um, just know what's coming. All of the waves are programmed in the same way. Uh, there are some, you know, differences between the waves. Sometimes there's a little bit more of a certain enemy and they also spawn in a different, uh, um, different order. But generally speaking, the the main enemies, like the ogres, there's always the same amount of ogres on the same wave, on the same level. So if you pay attention and you know you can't finish a level, uh, you can plan ahead for it, and you can change your, your strategy a little bit to accommodate for that. Uh, also, usually it slowly goes up, so you have a little bit of time to prepare for what's coming. Uh, I think on level... Um, on the first corridor level, level 5, I think, on the hallway level. Uh, the hound wave, the hounds yeah. appear actually one wave before that. There's one wave there where they're just like, there's a few of them. Oh boy, I think it's going to be close. There's uh, one wave before the hound wave where there's just a few of those. Oh no, oh no. Oh, we got oh it. you did it! Yeah! <laughs> it was like right on the last sliver of hell. Oh boy. <laughs> that was close. Oh my god. <laughs> that was really close. So yeah, okay. yeah, that was a very close call. Okay, let's do at least one more level, then I will let you go. Oh, okay? Boy. Yeah, no worries. It's a pleasure to be here. The Armory. That's a fun one. Now, uh,. Why, uh, do you, mm, blah, blah, excuse me, I, I need to learn how to talk. <laughs> um, what made you guys come up with the medieval theme for it, the castles and the dungeons and the dragons? Uh, why did you go with that instead of, say, something else like aliens or, you know, 
Well, we're considering like two that. things. Uh, mm -hmm. We could either do uh, we could, we could either go with medieval mm -hmm. or sci-fi ish, uh, and I think both we could potentially pull off. Uh, the factor that decided that we'll go with uh, with medieval, I mean, there are probably a few, uh, probably because I just like more. I, I personally more like medieval. That's one uh -huh. of them, but also. Uh, the other would be that we were developing at the time the Shadescape default pack uh, that you can see right now. Uh, it's actually the first project that we used it in uh, uh, the 32 by 32 pack that uh, we're playing with right now. And it's mostly like it, it could be, you know, adapted for sci fi -ish stuff, but at the time we were mostly focusing on getting that Minecrafty feel, Minecrafty fantasy feel. Which also is medieval, mostly. Yeah. So it we kind of went with that. With that. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, we probably did it mostly because of that, but like it could easily also be the uh, a sci-fi-ish kind of thing. Uh, who knows? Grave Danger too, potentially, in space. <laughs> <laughs> it could be fun. Uh, especially that uh, then you could come up with some pretty cool traps uh, with like gravity, anti-gravity, black holes, you know. Oh yeah, I mean, I think like pro yeah, yeah. I mechanics think probably be yeah, definitely. I mean, the mechanics would probably be similar, like the base mechanics, but um, just how they're flavored, how they're presented, uh, the chain. So this is a fun level because you have three lanes and you have to defend all of them. Uh, and that gets a little bit hectic at some point, uh, as you can see, in a bit. Well, I, I like it because I'm finally able to uh, try out that new turret I uh, got like a couple of levels ago. I didn't have any yeah. places to put it. The dragon, dragon flamer or piper, piper flamer. Uh, so, um... How uh, the idea of unlocking more stuff through achievements instead of say buying them with drops or something like that? How how um, you know what was the thought process in doing that instead of like something like uh, you know you earn money with kills and you buy this hurts in between waves? We were actually considering that. Uh, we were thinking about you know allowing the player to actually choose whatever he likes, but then we kind of thought that having a little bit more control over what's going on when different traps are unlocked, when different traps are presented to the player might actually allow us to tell a little bit better of a story overall because all of the traps are kind of slowly getting unlocked uh, thematically with levels but that also allows us to plan ahead and actually in future levels provide good ways of using those turrets for example, uh, on level 1 you get the spikes, right? Yes. And that's a very basic one, that's just to show the player, okay, that's how you place the traps, you don't have anything else to, you know, uh, so you can focus on just one thing, we're learning here, this is a tutorial level, place this trap down, great, now you know how that works. On level 2, you get the arrow trap, which is a wall trap, so now we are, you know, showing them, okay, you know how to place traps on the ground, now you learn how to place traps on the wall. Also, level 2 is designed in such a way, the layout of it is, that you can actually learn how to place the trap effectively, because there's like three corners on it, because it's like an S. So you can actually teach the player by giving him the trap early, that, oh, I can place the trap in a very specific way, and that way I can, you know, achieve more damage or, or whatever. Uh, the next drop that you unlock usually is the uh, spring drop, which is uh, given to you on level three, I believe, or level yeah, on, on level three for finishing level two. Uh, that drop you can use then to you know throw them back on that relatively short level, because that choke point, that one street that connects all the three doors to the door, the exit door, is very short. So yes. being able to throw them back to the start so they can walk all over those traps again actually, you know, is very useful there. 
And then also on the next level, we present the player with the ability to throw them into the lava, because we also introduce the lava <laughs> at the next at the next level as something that the player can do now. So, oh, I have this trap. Maybe I can use it to throw stuff in the lava and instantly kill it. Also, the dragon suggests that uh, suggests that in the cutscene. That's also intentional. We wanted to, you know, have a little bit of control over actually when what is unlocked because then we can kind of guide the player through that process a little bit more. Oh, it, it worked well uh, because it definitely got my attention. I started thinking about that. I'm like, okay, and I started doing it, and I saw how effective it was. It'd be uh, very fun just doing yeah. setting that up. And I very like all of that was theory because like we were planning those things out with that intention but you know it's always hard to test those things and when I started watching some uh, playthroughs after the map release and you know notice that it actually works well and it actually works as intended I was I was very very happy Good uh, that, that we managed to you know pull that out uh, because tutorials generally speaking, doing tutorials is relatively hard regardless of what the game is what type of the game it is and we wanted to keep it minimal in a way that you know the player can't really notice that he played a tutorial that's usually the best kind of tutorials the tutorials that you don't remember even uh, valve does that very well in their games yes they do uh, uh, yeah. Valve does uh, that uh, well and so does yeah. depending on the game so does uh Bethesda and some of their yeah, older, yeah, like the Fallout yeah. series and the Skyrim exactly. series. So you kind of try to do that and, you know, having the ability to actually dictate when what is unlocked, that is quite crucial with that. It maybe would have been more fun to just buy stuff, but who knows, maybe it wouldn't. So, you know, we went with this and I think I'm pretty happy with the choice that we made. Uh, and yeah, game design is, is full of those little tiny choices that influence the game, usually huge. Uh, I, I would definitely say it worked in your favor in this case, because like you said, it, it causes us to play around. One of the first things I did once I realized how you were doing it was, okay, well, that means I need to be playing around and trying new things and, uh, yep. you know, making sure I'm doing something different all the time so that I could possibly unlock a powerful turret you know a little early or you know simply if i want to unlock everything i need to make sure i'm doing stuff yep also that's like another thing with achievements they're just fun like people players like achievements because they both provide a challenge an additional challenge on top of what already is you know in the game but also reward the player for trying things out because sure we have quite plenty of achievements for just playing the game for you know progressing through the levels that you know, give you additional traps. But we also have achievements that are given to the player for doing fun stuff. Uh, like the Dragon Flamer, I think that's given to the player for killing uh, 100 zombies with lava or something like yes. that, or fire damage. Yes. Yeah. The player has to play around with different things to, to unlock that, and that's you know a reward for doing that. So yeah, achievements are fun. <laughs> Use them. Definitely. Same with the Steam Vent. Uh, it's also given for what uh, using spring props a lot, I think. Zombies now, must fly. I love the, uh, the animations for these individual traps, like this mm -hmm. uh, uh, flamer here. <laughs> uh, you know, the turret, how it moves around and searching for a target. Very nice detail in it. Um, and I think that's something that a lot of people take for granted sometimes in these in these games. Uh, just, you know, they're like, oh, okay, yeah. That, I've seen that. I'm like, yeah, but not that, not that many maps uh, that are on the marketplace or some studios, even though they're good, they just don't have the time or the talent to do that. Well, usually the time. Um, yeah. Like, like most of the studios, it. like, are toned enough to, to, to pull off stuff like this but it's a time thing mm. doing because we have what 21 traps in this game we had to do uh like this building animation for each of those right that took some time 
We need to do the fire off animation, which you know you can see the, the spikes being thrown up, or you know the flamer opening up. For some, we needed to do the idle animations and all that. Like that, just that's a lot of animations. <laughs> it takes a lot of time to do all of those. Also, same for the enemies. I don't know if you notice, but also small little detail: death animations. They are yes. different depending on the type of damage. Mm -hmm. If the zombie gets hit with. Uh, with uh, electric, I guess, or mana damage. Also, new enemy type. Uh, Acolyte. Uh, when uh, they get hit with electric damage and, and die because of that, they'll get a different animation than if they are you know, burning or dying in lava or you know, whatever. And we also had to do that for every single enemy in the game. So, you know, adding those little fun things, they increase the quality level it just feels much nicer the game overall it just feels more polished but that takes time that takes a lot of time a lot of and time. uh yeah. many places run they simply run out of time uh, a lot of yeah. features there's always something left out i told that to a friend of mine i said no matter what game you watch there's always gonna there's gonna be something that was left out because they ran out of time yeah. <laughs> also i mean either run out of time or just run out of Budget, because I mean, all of the projects that we do, or die, all of the projects that we do, we have to, whether we release something in the marketplace, it's a risk always. We never know if it will sell or not. So we usually we have to be relatively conservative with what we do on a project, because if we sink a lot of hours into doing all of those small details and the project completely flops, then yeah it wasn't really worth it was it i mean sure people who will play it will enjoy it greatly but we might just not hit the market that we wanted to and then you know we'll have to uh we'll have to deal with that so yeah it's 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 tough uh those those celebrations are usually the time where we can actually show off and uh, uh and do a little bit more than usual, I guess. So was, the there any, was there anything that you wanted to add to this that you weren't able to? Uh, there were a few small things because we kind of ran out of time, but I I tried to like throw them out of my, me of my memory, just forget about them. Because, uh, you know, you always want to add more. You always want to add, you know, more story, better cutscenes, more enemies, more bosses, more traps, more enemies, like, you can go on and on and on. I think we hit a spot where I'm pretty happy with the project, and I wouldn't say the, that we want to add more, really. Like, there's not much that would change at this point. Like, it plays well, it is balanced, it has a good, good playtime, very good playtime even. It has a good variety of enemies, of levels, different, you know, different layouts, different traps. There's so much stuff going on. It just feels very, very good. I don't think there's much stuff that I would add, really. Uh, mm -hmm. We were, like, there were a few things that we scrapped, but those were mostly small things, or, you know, some systems that, you know, would be cool to have, but now nah, we don't really have time. So it's, yeah, yeah. It didn't, it's not going to make or break the game. Yeah, exactly. It was mostly small things. Also, this is going to be very tight. Yes. Oh, Kill the acolyte. I'm trying. <laughs> ah. No. Well. Still I guess very, very good. T t tip of the day: focus on the acolytes because they uh, they can increase the amount of enemies quite substantially, quite quickly. Yes, they can. Yes, they yes. can. They're even, even worse than augurs, I, I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, th there are some small things here and there, you know, some small issues that I, I would like to have fixed, or, well, fixed. Uh, stuff that I would, I would like to have enhanced, I guess. Stuff, small stuff that we missed here and there, but, you know, you can have everything, so. Very good. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on and talking to us about this awesome game. No, it's no worries. It was a lot of fun being there here, and uh, it was a pleasure to, to both meet you, but also be here and, and talk a little bit about our project. <laughs> so, I'm very so, thankful for the invitation. 
No problems, no problems. All right, guys, uh, this is gonna kind of end. This is gonna enter interview slash let's play. I would highly recommend if you have not picked up Grave Danger yet, go pick it up right now. Uh, if you love tower defense or you really just love uh, this whole idea of setting traps and fighting your way through waves of really custom made enemies, I would just really suggest picking this up. And then don't forget to go over to Sharp Skate's uh, game list. I'm going to leave a link down in the description for you guys to go check out many of their other creations. They have a lot of maps on the marketplace, and I feel a lot of them really, really, really hit the mark for me. I've played a lot of them on the channel, and I feel like they do a really good job, so definitely go check them out if you are enjoying good content like this. All right, guys, that's going to end our show. Once again, thank you so much for joining me, and thank you for being on the show. I can't... Did you just... Did it kick you out of the game? Because I can't see you. Nope, nope. I mean, we're invisible because we're in the lobby, but nope, I'm uh, still here. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but uh, thanks again for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, but for everybody else... Make sure to leave a like, share, a subscribe, and notification. I am not done playing through this awesome game. We are at level 10. We still have many more levels to go. Uh, so make sure to stay tuned. <laughs> well, yeah. Thank you very much for, for inviting me again. And uh, yeah, see you guys. See you guys. Bye -bye. All right. Average Arcader out.